Hello, welcome to this tutorial on structure charts. Okie dokie, so let's get started. So first of all, what is a structure chart? Well, it's a top-down inverted tree representation of a system. So here we call it an inverted tree because it looks like an upside-down tree with the leaves at the bottom and on the outside here. And these are the branches. So it looks a bit like a tree that's upside down. And it's called top down because it starts at the bigger picture. And then as you go down through the diagram, it gets more into the nitty gritty and it breaks it down into pieces. So uh, it uses functional decomposition. So the each part of your program is broken down into different modules or functions or whatever you want to call them. Um, but it's broken down into little bits and here you can see that they've all got names for each of those functions and you can use sequencing selection and repetition just like you normally would in programming all of those can be represented on the diagram so you can see what's happening and also uh, where data is flow flowing and how the program is being controlled as well uh, that flow between different modules or functions is being represented okay so let's have a look at the symbols first of all there we go uh, we've got a few symbols the main one so the uh, each function or whatever process subroutine whatever it is is represented in a box with its name and in, you can see that here look each one's got a name there there we go and then each in between each box uh, there are lines showing where the program flows when each and shows when each function is called so for instance here you can see that the generate payroll this uh, function here well this calls these three one two three functions here um, and it does them in turn this one and then that one and then that one because you can see it starts on the left and goes through there we go and you so that's the call that's that's known as the call line showing which uh, which function is called next repetition is shown as well through the use of a semicircle arrow here and it shows where a process might be repeated sometimes that could be repeated indefinitely sometimes it may be for a certain number of times so for instance here you can see that this one two three these three because they're inside of this little semicircle loop here uh, all three of these are repeated we don't go into detail of how many times they're going to repeat it or on what condition but the repetition is shown there uh, selection is shown as well so if they're um, if for instance here this wasn't in a loop and you had a choice of getting the payroll calculating pay uh, or printing checks then there would be a little diamond shape here uh, which we'll show you in a, an example in a bit so uh, selection is included as well and sequencing here is all shown so you can see this happens first then it goes down to here then it goes down to here and then it goes back up and then this will happen etc dropping all the way down through each of the functions as far as you want to go um, when you when you're doing these diagrams the idea being is that you drill down into enough detail so that uh, it can be programmed here so if uh, here if you've not got the detail of these bits and the a programmer wouldn't be able to program it then you've not gone into enough detail you need to go further down into detail so that you're ready to program it uh, so there's your selection kind of a diamond shape sometimes it kind of looks like a um the the symbol for a right hand triangle uh, right handed triangle right handed right angle triangle uh and sometimes it's just represented by a solid symbol so that that depends okay so let's show you a quick example of that so for instance here if you had a, a phone book app and the main menu um, allowed gave you three options and you can either display all your contacts in your phone book or you could add a contact or you could find a contact and these were separate screens then you just have this kind of diamond shape here in the middle and coming off each bit were the three options that you could choose from there there's no detail in here about how you choose those options uh, but we'd leave that up to late, uh, later on 
when you're actually programming it. This is just to show where things are actually moving to. Okie dokie. So, and the next bit to look at are the data flow and the control flow pointers. So the data flow uh, pointer here, this one is a uh, circle with an arrow coming off it, and it's a clear circle, transparent circle, and this indicates where data is being passed from one module to another. Um, could be any kind of data. Um, generally, though, if your data is being passed from a module when it, at the start, then that's really going to be from the top down. Then that's going to be the module passing a parameter to it within the function call. And if it's flowing back up to the function where it came from, then that would be a return value. The data has been returned. And we'll look at an example of that in a minute. And the other type is the control flow. This is represented by a solid black circle with an arrow coming out on it. And this indicates some value that's being passed that allows the module that it's being passed to to make a decision. And normally, uh, in this sort of instance, it is a flag variable, a true or a false. Um, so once you've got that, well, um, you can then, the module can then use that to make a decision. Okie dokie. So uh, let me just show you these in the previous example. So if you look at, uh, for instance, here, when you generate the payroll, it comes down to here, no data gets passed. Uh, then you go and get the payroll record. Again, no data is getting passed. You're just literally running the function. So you can see here, there's two things that could be passed. Uh, when it gets a payroll record, it either just returns the payroll record itself, in which it goes down to there. Uh, once it comes back to here, that payroll record that's returned is passed onto the payroll record validating thing, whatever that does. And then uh, once it's been, once it gets to there, the record is then validated and a, a flag, a true or false record flag is returned. And then this obviously gets passed on to the payroll all the way through to the rest of the function. So uh, those are the, uh, the, the data flags here. Um, if it tries to read a record, but there's no records left, then instead of passing the payroll record, it would pass an end of file flag. So it probably just return false or null rather than returning a record itself. And then here, this can use that decision, that data, to make a decision saying, okay, if it's returned null, then we don't bother going down the valid or date record because there's nothing to validate. And we just go back over to the generate payroll bit. And again, you can see here, it will pass a record over and that will go down here and do things. Uh, and then once it's run out of records here, Instead of passing more data back, it's just going to pass, again, a null or a false flag or something that will go back that indicates that the payroll is over. Um, and that's it done there. Okay, so that is, let's go back there. That is the data control uh, flow and the control flow flags. So now what we'll do is we'll walk through a full program and show you how this works when you're making your own. So here, let's say, for instance, I don't want to make a trivia quiz and I start and I think, OK, well, I'm going to need a start menu and that start menu is going to give me three options. Uh, I want the option of displaying an existing high scores if someone's already play, played it, uh, well, maybe with names and stuff. Uh, we want the actual game itself. So the, um, the, the trivia quiz game itself. And then we might want another option here if we want to start all over again to delete all data that's stored in the database. Okay, so first thing we'll have a look at, well, here we go, we'll have a look at the uh, high scores. Well, we know that the display high scores is gonna get, need to go and fetch the scores, and it's going to need to sort the scores by um, highest score, or maybe it can have an option in here as to what you want to sort it by. But let's just assume that this program's just gonna sort, sort it by the highest score. So in terms of data that's flowing, well, you don't pass any data to the um, fetch scores because it just knows to go fetch all of them. Uh, but returning here, we return the scores list, which goes back there. And then this gets passed to the sort scores. And uh, there we go. It gets um, passed to the score list there. And if we might have another sort by option here uh, that tells it how to sort it, 
and then it returns back the sorted score list back to here which would then get uh, displayed inside of this function there so that's that part of it program let's have a look at the main game part of the program so this part of the program you've got the main game here and what it does is first of all it asks a question then it checks the answer and it keeps repeating that uh, until it's run out of questions and then finally at the end it displays the final score so if you have a look at it here you need to pass it uh, for each one a question number and you pass the question number that you want the, the one now to the ask question function it then goes and retrieves the question the correct question and it asks the question and it returns the answer that the user inputs and what happens there is then the main game then gets the answer that the user's input and it passes along the question number as well to the check answer function and then that checks it against the stored answer and if it's the same then it increases the score by one by returning the, the score difference and then if it doesn't then it will just return a score of zero so that's just a kind of a score for that particular question that goes back to the main game and the main game keeps track of the score and it keeps repeating repeating and repeating until it's out of questions and then it goes to the display final score where it displays the total score which it passes to the final score module there we go and that leads us on to the final bit which is just the delete all data module and again that's got two parts to it you're going to have a bit where it asks them to confirm whether they really want to delete it um, so it's some kind of question that gets asked and that's going to return a true or false value if it's false then it probably just goes back to the start menu if it's true then it runs the clear database uh, function here and that clears out the database there you go so that is how you build a structure chart obviously it's going to depend completely from program to program and you can do it in your own style there's no right or wrong way um, but that gives you an idea on how to go about designing them the best thing you can do is to pick an example a simple program so if it's like a higher or lower game or a simple card game and then design yourself your own structure chart to practice it or some other program like a you know a quiz program Okie dokie, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed that tutorial and thank you very much.